Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Marshal, Chester. Uh, hi, Mr. Uh, hello, Jake. What brings you into town? Marshal, are you interested in stopping a killing? A killing? One, maybe more. Why, what's the trouble, Jake? Andy Bowers. Emmett Bowers' kid? He ain't a kid if he's old enough to be bullying around after my daughter. Well, Judy's a pretty little thing. I can't say I blame Andy. I told that boy, if he ever set foot on my place again, I'd shoot him. And you would, huh? I would. Jake, you and Emmett Bowers are the two biggest cattlemen around here. Why do you have to be enemies? There's room for both of you. There ain't enough room in the whole United States for me and Emmett Bowers. All right, all right, Jake. And I suppose you know what'll happen if you shoot Andy. That's why I want you to put him in jail. Let him cool off for a while. you will forget about Judy. You think I'd put a man in jail just because you don't happen to like him, Jake? I'm an important man in Kansas, Marshal, and I run things my way. But you don't run the United States government, and you don't run me. All right. I tried. Now it's going to happen, Marshal. It's going to happen fast. <laughs> Doc yammering about, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. Sitting here, taking your ease in the sun while the whole country's gone to war. Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What you been feeding on, Doc? Uh, it isn't me, Chester. I just came back from Bowers Ranch, Matt. The cook out there's got the ague again. And let me tell you, that place is an armed camp. Every man on it is carrying a rifle. They've got sentries posted and everything. Now, does Emmett think Judy Worth is going to come over there and steal, Andy? No, but it seems like some of Jake Worth's men fired on a couple of Bowers riders the other day. Said they were off their home ground or some such fool thing. And ever since, both sides have been fixing for battle. Oh, <laughs> and it won't take much to start one either, Matt. Yeah. Well, knowing Jake and Emmett, there's no point in my talking to them. Yonder comes half the cause of the trouble right now. What? Yonder. Huh? That's Andy Bowers. Hey, Andy. Andy. Oh, he's a nice boy, Andy. Well, that little Judy Worth's a nice girl, too. Hi, Doc. <laughs> Hello, Andy. Andy, uh, Doc tells me that there's a war about to break out over you and Judy Worth. Well, I know, Marshal. But I can't talk my paw into anything any more than Judy can hers. If her mothers were alive, it might be different. But the way it is, it's pretty hopeless. What do you mean, Hopeless. Well, I guess I'd better stop trying to see her, that's all. Oh, that's a fine way to talk. Well, I don't want to, Doc. Then where's your spunk, boy? Where's your get up and go? Don't you love the girl? Of course I love her. But you're going to let a couple of cantankerous, selfish old men beat you out of her. Doc. Why, you don't deserve her. What she needs is a man, not a whimpering kid, who turns back at the first sign of a little rain. Doc. Well, it's true, Matt, and you know it. 
But they'll never let us get married, Doc. What have they got to do with it? It isn't them who's getting married. I know. Well, I've thought of running off. I never said nothing to Judy about it, though. Don't talk about it, Act. Doc. And if she won't go with you, then she doesn't love you as much as you think she does. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. What do you think, Marshal? You're right. It's my business. Mine and Judy's. Yes. I better get going now. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Bye. boy. Uh. Oh, Doc, you did a real good job. Yeah. You think he'll do it? I don't know. But if he does, there'll be war, sure. And I know a broken-down, romantic old country croaker we can blame it on. Oh, fiddle-faddle. You want those kids to get married just as much as I do. And anyway, it's time you started earning your pay around here. <laughs> well, I got things to do. Let me hear what happens, Matt. Yeah, don't worry, Doc. You'll hear. <laughs> More pleasure packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> Nobody's lost his temper so far, Chester. <laughs> Reckon you'll be needing me anymore? <laughs> no, I won't need you. You can go to bed. Somebody sneaking in back. Yeah. Get over on the other side of the room, Chester. Yes, sir. It's Andy Bowers. Andy? Who's that in back of you? Come on, Judy. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Well, I, what are you two doing here? I got word to Judy and she sneaked off and met me. Doc was right, Marshal. She wanted to go. Of course I did. Well, what did you come here for? We're being followed, Marshal. We've got to hide somewhere. You can't stay here, Andy. I'll think of a way we can sneak out of Dodge, Marshal. But we can't do it tonight. Uh... You say you're being followed, huh? Yeah. Judy's paw and a couple of his men. We lost them a few miles back, but they're sure to ride on into Dodge. Why'd you leave your horses? Oh, they're tied out and back. And I gotta do something with them. Look, Andy. Your paw and Judy's are gonna start a war over this, and you're putting me right in the middle of it. Don't you realize that? Well? I guess he's right, Andy. We can get him mixed up in it. But he's the only man around here we can trust. I know, but it isn't fair to put all this on him. Oh, maybe you're right, Judy. Come on. I'll think of something. But we better hurry before they catch us. Wait. Wait a minute. What, Marshal? Chester. Yes, sir? You go with Andy. Take those horses down to Moss Grimmick's stable and tell him to hide them. Oh, uh, well, Moss knows how to do that, Mr. And put Andy up in the loft somewhere. Moss will understand. All right, sir. Oh, what about Judy? Now, you two get going. I'll take care of Judy. Oh, he's going to help us, Andy. He's going to help us. Yeah, I'm going to help you. But who's going to help me, I sure don't know. 
Judy could stay here until she and Andy can get on out of town. I, I'm sure it'll surprise you that they're running away. They're running away? Oh, no. They are? Oh, well, isn't that wonderful? Yes, and yeah. we're going to make it, too, in spite yeah. of our father. You sure are. And you're welcome to stay right here as long as you want, Judy. Nobody will look for you here. Oh, that's real kind of you, Doc. Oh, no, no. It's just that I like the idea of people who want to get married just as much as you and Andy do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I better get going. Uh, no, you stay here, Judy, until you hear from me. You understand? All right, Marsha. Uh, yes. Uh, I think I'll go with you, Matt. <laughs> and now you can make yourself comfortable, Judy. And I'll be back in a couple of hours. Now bring you something to eat, huh? How's that? I'll be waiting for you, Doc, and thank you. Oh, you're a nice girl. Come on, Matt. Well, Matt? Doc? I know how, but I don't know why I got mixed up in this. But I'm sure in it now. Yeah, uh, come on into Long Branch, Matt. You need a drink. Yeah, maybe I do, Doc. <laughs> Say, look, Matt. It's Jake Worth. Yeah. Who's that with him? His name's Ab Drain, Doc. Ab Drain? Yeah, Jake's hired himself a gunman. And a pretty good one, too. Uh oh. They've seen you. Yeah, you stay out of the way, huh? <laughs> Don't worry. Well, I haven't seen you in a long time, Ab. Cheyenne, wasn't it? Me and Jake have been looking for you, Marshal. How's that so? Where's Judy? Judy? Now, don't lie to me, Marshal. You know where she is. You're going to tell me? Is that what Ab's for, Jake? So you can push people around more than ever? Never mind him. I never have. Have I, Ab? You'll get it someday, Marshal. Maybe I'm the one who'll give it to you. Shut up, Ab. I don't want no fighting now. Why do you think I might know where Judy is, Jake? She was in your office, wasn't she? Huh? One of my men here in town saw her and that rotten Bowers kid right around back of your office. Now, where is she? All right, Jake, they were in my office, yeah. Keep talking, Marshal. Jake told you to shut up, Ab. Now I'm telling you. Never mind that. Where is she? Jake, why don't you and Emmett Bowers call this off before there's a lot of useless bloodshed? Neither one of you can win anything this way. I ain't even listening to you, Marshal. All right, then go on home. And take Ab Drain with you. Who do you think you're talking to, Marshal? You can't bluff me, Ab. You know that. Now you get moving. I ain't bluffing, Marshal. Stop it. I don't want no fighting. Not yet. But I'm telling you this, Marshal. I'm going back to the ranch. And Judy's there in two hours, or I'm coming in here with every man I've got. And you know what I'll do. Don't be a fool, Jake. Let's go, Ab. Hey, they look mad, Matt. They're coming back in two hours, Doc, with an army. Oh, no. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to get Jim Buck out of bed. He's driving an empty stage west tomorrow morning anyway, and he can leave tonight. And a preacher can tie a horse on behind long enough to get Judy and Andy married. While you stay behind to take on Jake's army. Is that it? Yeah, that's it, Doc. <laughs> Tax 
more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Less than an hour later, Jim Buck quietly drove his stage out of Dodge. A couple of miles down the trail, he stopped long enough to witness the marriage of Judy Worth and Andy Bowers. And then he headed west as fast as his team could travel. Six hours later, I was sitting in the front room of Jake Worth's ranch house, stalling for time. As I had been ever since I got there. I'm getting tired of this, Marshal. He'll be here any minute now, Jake. Just be patient. I think he's lying to us, Jake. Will you quit poking and howling at me? Ah, oh, here they are. You men stay outside and close that door. Bring her in here, Chester. Where's Judy? Well, I... Where is she? I, I wouldn't know where she is, Mr. Worth. What? What are you saying? I I'm saying the truth. Marshal, is this a trick? Yeah, Jake, it's a trick. Judy's a long way from here by now. And you'll never find her. Tell me where she is. Tell me or by heaven I'll kill you. I'm like Chester, Jake. I wouldn't know where she is. You lied to me. You said Chester was bringing her. Yeah, I lied to you, Jake. Marshal, so help me. Wait a minute, Jake. Jake. This is my job. Just get out of the way, Adam. No, nah, no. Nah. You couldn't take him. Don't you try it, Ab. Watch me. Now, don't make me kill you, Jake. No. It's too late anyway. Judy's gone. It's too late for anything. Mr. Worth? Now get get out of here. I'll call you when I want you. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. Where's he going? Wait here a minute, Chester. Yes, sir. This must be Judy's room, huh, Jack? I'll keep it for her. Like this. Maybe she'll come back someday. She won't be back, Jake. No. Don't don't say that. It's true, you might as well face it. And you drove her away. No. You and Emmett Bowers both. If you'd once thought of Andy and Judy instead of yourselves, they'd be here now. I don't blame them for running off. They wouldn't be any good if they hadn't. You helped them. Why should they give up their happiness for a couple of mean, selfish old men? Sure, I helped them. You and Emmett have been too busy hating each other to be of any use to anybody, especially your own kids. Marshal, I... I'm going to tell you one thing, Jake. They're married now. Married? That's right. Now I'm going over and tell Emmett Bowers about it. No, wait, wait, Marshal. Yeah, what? You think it might help if maybe I rode over to Emmett's with you? It might help you and Emmett, Jake. And it might help the kids, too, when they hear about it. <laughs> In a 
moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, a newcomer to the West was often referred to as a pilgrim and made fun of. But next week, a pilgrim nearly causes a wholesale massacre. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, John Daner, James Nusser, and Joyce McCluskey. Harley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day, change to L and M today. L and M. So good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L&M today. L&M filters. So good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Relax with L&M. America's best filter cigarette.